Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to my first impressions of Star Crusade. Now, Star Crusade is a sci-fi CCG that is currently in open beta on Steam. Now, if you want to check out the game, uh, there is a referral link in the description, along with a promo code you can use to get a head start in the game. But anyway... So, the game does take a lot from Hearthstone in particular, which is no surprise. I think most of the games I've covered recently have been taking a lot from Hearthstone, which is understandable, uh, considering how successful that game has been. But Hearthstone has a few problems with it, which I think Star Crusade has been uh, trying to address. Namely, the sort of lack of complexity and also a slight over-reliance on randomness, which I think a lot of people can agree on. But anyway, first things first, the opening menu. Now, the menu system for this game isn't actually too bad. So it's all, I mean, you've got it all set up, just the standard stuff there. You've got quests on the other side. It's not too intrusive. I actually like the way this is laid out. Now, as usual, you got leave feedback, report bug buttons, because it is, in fact, a beta. And then down this corner, you've got the friends list. And because it's a Steam game, you also have the benefit of Steam integration, which is a very, very useful thing. There's also a little notification bell. Now, this is cool. Uh, this notification thing basically lets you know of anything that's happening uh, with the game, which is surprisingly handy, and you get a little notification thing there, and it, yeah, you basically get kept to date with uh, what's going on. Now, as far as settings goes for the game, uh, it's pretty standard stuff for CCG. It's basically just quality from fastest to optimal. Now, I always leave it on fastest when I'm recording because I hate frame drops. Uh, you can also do windowed, full screen, resolutions, normal stuff. That's that's all normal. However, and also card packs. Now, this, like, see if I can find this here. Oh yeah, this thing. This is the, this automatically made me like this game. I have been asking for Hearthstone to have a mute all emotes button for the last two years. <laughs> Because, okay, so emotes are basically an alternate system to chat, is the idea, right? The problem with emotes is that, while they can be fun, a lot of people love spamming them. So you have to squelch or mute every single person you're against. And that's what was happening in Hearthstone, and it just annoyed me. However, in this game, if you don't like emotes, there's a mute all emotes. Which I am astonishingly happy with. Uh, there's also a blacklist and what you can do to control in spectator mode. Now, spectator mode is actually very, very well done in this game. So you've got a games list, which gives you a list of games. And you can just click the spectator and it will put you into the game. And from what I can tell, there aren't any bugs with this. And, well, I haven't watched enough games to know for sure. But it seems to run fairly smoothly. And... This is adding to the list of games that has a much, much better spectator mode than Hearthstone does, which is kind of embarrassing. But yeah, this has actually been done very, very well. I'm very happy with the spectator mode. I've watched quite a few games just to kind of get an idea of what other people are playing that have been playing for longer than me. So yeah, very, very happy with that. There's also a sort of list of the top 100 players with all their rankings, which is also a nice addition. So anyway... Onto the deck builder. Now, in my opinion, the deck builder is a very, very important thing of any game. Now, yes, it does have the, the new card thing, which gives you a notification for that. Now, as far as I know, I don't think you can just type new in here and it gives you all of them. I mean, I don't have any new cards to test that, but I don't think that works. But as for the rest of the deck builder, I actually do like the way this is organized. So you've got your decks on the side. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll through these. You just have to uh, put your mouse over the decks. Or you can click through quite quickly. Uh, and then you can also do the same. If your mouse cursor is over here, you can, again, use your... Just scroll. Scroll through everything. Which is shockingly useful. I hadn't really thought about scrolling through... A uh, deck builder before, but it definitely speeds up the process than doing this. Because uh, if you're looking for a certain card, you have to go backwards and forwards, and you've just got the scroll button instead. That's that is actually quite a good thing. Uh, then we've got the uh, sort of standard search options, and you can search for creature types and also just card types and things like that in the uh, search bar. So if I just uh, 
Search for a cyborg, for instance. That I have misspelt. <laughs> but yeah, so it brings up all of the cyborgs that I currently own. So anyway. Uh, so yeah, the search options are quite good, and it has the all button there instead of having to double click the mana thing, which always annoyed me. So yeah, having a nice just undo the uh, search on that is very, very good. Now, I mentioned earlier that the game sort of tries to address some of the lack of complexity from Hearthstone, and the way it does this is the hero power system. So if we go into uh, this hierarchy deck, you notice that there are three hero powers here. Now, these are the modules. So if I go into fusion mode, which is just crafting, it'll show all the cards I do not currently own. And these are all hero powers you can use. These are passive or active, so you can have different costs for them. They can have mana costs or energy costs. Uh, we'll get to energy when we uh, show off a bit of a game. And these allow an insane amount of customization when it comes to deck building because a lot of these passive ones in particular are just very very specific like look at this so all of your units have plus one hp but minus one on the attack that changes the way you play drastically it is a very very good addition and i love the module system in this game and is one of the best things in it uh it is done very very well now, as far as the factions goes, there are six. We just uh, go into the playmate thing here. So you've got starter decks for each. There are six. There's Hierarchy, Shanti, Let's see if I can get all these names right, Anunnaki. For anyone that's watched my stream, they'll know I'm terrible at names. The Hajir Gog, just the Hajir, Terran, very easy, and the Consortium. So yeah, there are six factions, and they're all sci-fi themed, so you've sort of got, you know, the merchants, and then you've got the standard sort of human faction, warrior faction, the psychics, people who love dealing with genetics, and cyborgs. So yeah, you've got all your sort of sci-fi tropes that uh, are nice to include in this kind of game. So anyway... Now, for the shop, we actually have... Well, we've got lots of things that they haven't introduced yet, but it's just of note that it's beta. They're going to add this stuff later, so you've got, like, campaigns and things, which should be interesting. Now, the pricing on packs seem to be fairly fairly well-priced. Uh, I think they're slightly less than Hearthstone's. Don't quote me on that, because I haven't actually checked Hearthstone's pricing in a while. But as for... So you can just buy packs, and the opening for packs is actually interesting. So... As far as I can tell, the random element of, like, rarities, if we just have a look at the rarities here, you've got regular, which is just nothing at the top, and then you've got conscript, which is basically commons, and then you've got elite, which is the equivalent to rare, heroic, which is equivalent uh, to epic and hearthstone, and you've got paragon at legendary, although it's done a bit more like it is in Spellweaver, where there isn't this sort of, like, you can only have one power you can only have one copy of a power gun card in your deck. That doesn't exist. It's more like it's done in Spellweaver where it's just a different rarity as opposed to a mechanic attached to the rarity, if you kinda see what I mean. So anyway, six cards in a pack. Oh, I just opened a high rarity card there. It's got this little uh, soundtrack it does for some of these. Yeah, there's different soundtracks depending on the rarity uh, you open up, which is a nice touch. There are six cards in a pack, and the chances of each rarity showing up, I think, are about the same as they are in Hearthstone per card, but the amount of cards per pack is actually higher. So I think that the... Well, I mean, the amount of cards you get uh, per equivalent to 100 gold is higher, which is good, because I've always said that I think Hearthstone's... I think Hearthstone's is a little bit stingy with its economy. I've kind of always said that, and... Wow, second legendary in three packs. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just opening these in the background. It's just like, nope, you're going to get tons of these. Um, but yeah, I've always said that Hearthstone is a little bit stingy with its cards, but Star Crusade has increased a little bit, which means it's, well, by default, easier to get cards. Now, I haven't played enough of the game to give a 
sort of good evaluation as to whether or not I think that the free-to-play mechanics are sort of very, very well done, or they're a little bit too generous, or not generous enough. I just haven't played the game enough to actually uh, give that justification. But overall, I'm happy that it's a bit more generous than Hearthstone. Because I think Hearthstone, as I said, is a little bit on the stingy side. So anyway. Now, if we go on to the game modes, we've got four ways of playing. Uh, there's the three standard ones, which is casual, where you don't have to play for any sort of rating. And you get reduced experience, I think. But anyway, uh, then you've got ranked which is your standard sort of you play against other people of roughly equal rating to you and you see if you can climb the ladder and you get rewards depending on how far up you get uh, on the ladder you get free packs at the end of the month which is nice and then there's practice which is just against bots now worth noting you unlock classes or factions uh, you start with just the Terran the basic Terran deck and then you unlock other factions as you beat them which means that uh, you can get this through practice, or you can get this through casual, or even ranked. Uh, so in my case, I unlocked, uh, I think the majority of the faction just by playing casual, and uh, I actually unlocked uh, Shanty and ranked. <laughs> um, but yeah, you unlock classes by beating them, and you can do that in practice, or in uh, casual or ranked. Now, the other game mode is Raid. Now, this is their equivalent to Arena, so it has the, uh, the deck that I've drafted. But what I really like about this is, if you go onto the map, this is this is something which I really like about this game, is the aesthetic quality of it. It's done very, very well. So instead of just having a number of victories, it shows a map of you conquering an area. Which is really cool, because part of how the game works is that you've got fleets trying to conquer planets and that's what each battle is basically supposed to sort of signify so i think this is really really well done and it also each uh, win you get gives you credits which is equivalent to gold and then it gives you some crafting materials and then a card and it shows you the card that i've uh, been given for that other victory so anyway i actually think this is a very very cool way of showing that much much it's much much more fun to look at than just a number of wins i'll put it that way so anyway, we go on to a ranked game. I think we'll uh, show off a hierarchy deck here so I can have a look at the hero powers a little bit more. Now, for the general graphical quality of the game, I've been fairly impressed. I think it's, especially for an indie game, I think the game does look very, very good. Uh, that's what I will say about uh, about the game. It does look very, very good. The animations are generally well done. There's a lot of different voice acting on each of the cards, which is a nice addition. Uh, it's always nice to see voice acting on individual cards. And also, whenever, it's, whenever they interplay, attack, or leave, there's, well, see, find a game there, and you come out of sort of the hyper jump or whatever, or warp jump. Now, this is where I get to show off some of the uh, different mechanics here. Now, you'll notice we have different life totals. See if I can just uh, mulligan this. This is the same system as it is in uh, Hearthstone, so we'll just uh, we'll keep the nullify, which is the equivalent to silence. You'll notice we have different life totals. And I went second, so I get the extra card and the initiative, which is basically the coin or the spark. Now, the reason we have different life totals is because I have more cards in my deck. He has the minimum number of cards in his deck, which is 25. I have the maximum, which is 40. Can't really uh, play anything here. Actually, I think we uh, might just get a Terminator down. It's just a vanilla 2-3, because then I can uh, play Mass Transfer and destroy this assembly uh, complex next turn, since it has 4 life. But, basically, this is the trade-off. You can get increased consistency for less life. However, if you have less cards in your deck, if you have a less cards in your deck than your opponent, you start with an extra card in hand. Now, at first I thought, hang on a sec, don't you just always play 25 cards? Because you get increased consistency and you get an extra card to start, right? It's not entirely true, because life is a resource, which means if you have weapons in your deck, you want more life. And one of the hero powers actually damages yourself and then gives you attack. Which means you need more life to work with because otherwise you won't be able to use that hero power uh, to its full utility. So it's actually fairly well balanced. I don't know if it's completely well balanced because I haven't played the game enough. But it's definitely 
it's definitely much, much better done than I thought it was at first. Because uh, at first I was just kind of worried. It's like, this seems a bit sketchy. But no, it actually does work. And it's definitely one of the more unique ways of doing uh, deck variability. Now, because this has a shield now, I can't kill it. So I think what I'll just do is instead of playing my mass transfer, I'll use one of my hero powers. And I'll use Deep Weave to uh, give my little cyborg an extra health and take off the shield. So anyway, as far as the board's concerned, you've got Combat Log. Now, you do have to click each one of these. You don't just mouse over them, which uh, I'm actually not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It does mean you can't accidentally mouse over them, which does happen uh, before. but And it also means you can just leave it up and kind of move your mouse the way you want to. And you just click out if you want to uh, get rid of it. So yeah, the Combat Log is fairly detailed. As we know, it restores that to full. Yeah, so what he did there was uh, he gave it attack equal to its HP. Uh, but we do have the nullify to deal with this. Now, you notice the hero powers are laid out in such a way that they're not, they're not sort of in your face. They're just like an extension of your hand is kind of the way they're positioned. It reminds me a bit of how uh, lands are laid out in Magic, actually. That's what it reminds me of. Because you have your lands in front of you, and then you have the creatures in front of that. And that's kind of what it reminds me of. So, if we look at the differences in hero powers here, we both got, because we're both playing the same class, we both have the basic one. You don't actually have to play the basic hero power, by the way. It's just, generally, it is not necessarily the most powerful out of the hero powers you can play, but it'll generally do what you want it to do in the kind of decks you'll be playing. So, anyway, we both have the standard one, which is the sta is just the priest heal, basically, restoring 2 HP. Now, I've got deep weave, which gives... a Creature of mine, plus one maximum HP, and I also have Energy Banks. Now, Energy Banks has an energy cost. Now, you gain energy when you deal damage to your opponent, you gain one energy, or when you destroy something, you gain energy equal to its cost. And Energy Banks lets me drain my current mana pool and give me a card that allows me to gain mana whenever I want to. Now, the way Supply works is the same as is uh, in Hearthstone, so you gain one, uh, one per turn. Now, that 4-7 is a bit of a problem. So what can I do here? I can use Teleport to draw, but then that leaves me a bit open. So I think what I'll do here is just play the Patrol. That gives me 1-6 of a screen, which is basically Taunt, as we have a little graphic there for Taunt. And... Leaving a 0-4 is actually not a good thing on the board, because um, he could always just buff it up, so I'll damage it. So anyway, for his hero powers, he has Impose Shield. Now, this has an energy cost, but this is actually part of a uh, hero power that at the end of the turn, it turns into a random upgrade hero power that uses energy. And when you use that hero power, it goes back to its original thing. Hopefully, he'll use it and we'll uh, see that. And the third one is, if you target a textless or nullified unit with a tactic, it gains plus one, plus one. Now, tactics are just spells, uh, basically. So, like, this is a tactic, mass transfer. So, anyway, as far as the uh, base set goes, there are currently about 400 cards in the game. And that is quite a large base set. Now, granted, it is, it is split over six factions, but a lot of it is neutral. So, I mean, with Spellweaver, it's sort of... There's less cards in the game, but they're sort of the two color element. So what you're really comparing it to is something like uh, Hearthstone's base set, which was just under 400, but that had nine classes. So overall, each class has more options. However, a lot of that comes from the modules. Now that is where the majority of your deck building is going to be coming from, is just the modules, as there is now a 616 tank on the other side. Not really sure what I'm supposed to do about that. Uh... I mean, we'll keep playing, but that's going to be a problem. Now, the Rapid Strike team will let me kill this. The problem is I need to kind of draw into a way of dealing with this. So I think I'll just play Teleport, get two random cyborgs from my deck, and thin my deck out so I can actually draw some stuff. Now, that also gives the cyborgs plus one HP. Now, we can use Deep Weave, get the free kill there. 
and then use this emergency repairs to restore up the full. Now, this basically forces him to use the tank to kill it. I do have 40 life, which means I do have plenty of time to sort of sit around and hopefully draw into one of my removal spells to deal with this monstrosity of a tank. But anyway... As I said earlier, the aesthetic quality of the game is very, very good. If we look at the background here, all there are so many of these boards. I actually have no idea how many like planet backgrounds there are, but when stuff dies, there's sort of meteorites everywhere. As you see, it's supposed to simulate sort of like a almost like a space battle type thing, which I think is done pretty well. So far, I've been pretty impressed with the look of the game. It is definitely above average for sort of an independent developer. Way above average. Uh, you don't really expect this kind of graphical quality from a... Well, I was about to say low-budget game, but it's more you expect this from a high-budget game as opposed to a, uh, a low one, since it's roughly on par with Hearthstone in terms of graphical quality. Or at least uh, early Hearthstone. I think current Hearthstone probably has uh, a bit of an edge. Alright, so let's use this uh, mass transfer, and then get the two kills, and then we'll go ahead and play this 2-1, and that lets me heal up. So yeah, see, I could activate this now, but I don't have any supply left, so all it would do is give me a zero-cost spell that gives me zero supply this turn, so it wouldn't exactly do much. Now, something of note, there's also this little icon here that shows how many people are spectating. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny, because... Like, sometimes this number will go up to 2, 3, 4, and it's just some random rank game. But yeah, people do actively use the spectator mode. So generally, most games you'll be playing will have one or two spectators just hanging around. Because as I said, the spectator mode does work very, very well. Now, as far as the rest of the UI goes, it does have ranks. Now, currently, I'm an Enzyme, which has... Well, it's rank 23. Now, he's at rank 14. That's probably just because the amount of people, uh, once you start getting above rank 25 really, the amount of people that you can run into decreases rapidly because the game is very, very new so the player base isn't that large. So anyway, now we could play the Cypher. This is basically a secret. So after one of my friendly units is attacked, all friendly units gain shield, which could be very, very good and that only costs two mana. This thing has become absolutely colossal. <laughs> I like how it has uh, Revenge return this to its owner's hand, but it's just so unnecessary because I'm never going to kill this thing. Uh, well, it's not impossible for me to kill it, but it's difficult. So uh, we'll drop the Cypher. And we could definitely just convert the rest. You are a I think that might be what we're going to do here. I think we need to go for a big turn. So we're just going to convert the rest of that supply into a, uh, an Innervate-esque card that gives me two extra supply next turn. I see the energy costs go up and down, and that's 27 damage. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping he wasn't going to draw the second copy of that, but no, he did. Killed by 2719 tank! Oi! Uh, yeah, <laughs> that could have come better. But what you do, and yeah, it shows the experience gained at the end there. Now, as far as card unlocking goes for classes, you notice that uh, a lot of these are at level 15, and then I randomly stopped at level 15. Now, the reason for this is that you unlock cards until you're at level 9, and then at level 15, you unlock the second hero power. So if we go back into the deck builder, go into the, uh, the module section here, notice that, well... Bad example, because I actually have a second hero power there. But yeah, for the Consortium, because I haven't leveled them up to 15, I only have the single hero power. And their hero power is a bit more like a... Almost like a shaman type hero power. Although, these are a bit more diverse than totems. Uh, but then for Terran, because I have leveled them up quite significantly, I actually have two hero powers that I can use just by default, because you unlock the uh, the second one. And as you saw for Hierarchy, I do have the, the secondary hero power, but I also have uh, energy banks, which I opened in a pack. So yeah, the hero power system is really the big seller. That and the energy system. Now, energy isn't just used for hero powers. It is used predominantly for hero powers. 
but not just Hero Power. So, for instance, if I go over and show one of my favorite cards, if I can uh, actually find this thing, the Mammoth Tank. I don't know why I like this thing, but I just do. So, 6 mana, 4, 6. And when you play it, which is activate, you put two 1-1 one, one Guardsmen into play, and you can energize, so you can spend 6 energy as the additional resource, and all Guardsmen gain emergency bunkers, which is... Basically, they can't be targeted by spells or uh, commander abilities. So the idea is, energy is a secondary resource that you should probably find a way of using because if you don't, uh, basically, if you don't fill in all of your hero powers, then you'll gain one energy extra per turn. You'll just get a third module that says gain one energy at the end of each turn. So. But besides that, whenever you kill something or deal damage, you'll gain energy. So you want to have something in your deck that can use energy. Now, one of the cards that is in a lot of the basic decks, for instance, that is uh, what well, it's called an energy sink, is the sniper. So the idea is you get to play for two mana, you deal the damage, but you can use your energy, keeping in mind that in the starter decks, because you only have the one hero power, you'll be gaining two energy a turn uh, just from your modules and also from combat. So you have tons of energy sitting around, so you can just play a Sniper and bounce it back to your hand for 6 energy when, when you play it. And whenever you kill something with a Sniper, you'll gain its cost in energy. So you can just keep looping these things, and it's a good way of sinking excess energy that you would normally have around. So in a lot of my uh, decks that basically like need these kinds of ping effects but also just in a lot of my decks that i haven't leveled up that much so i've got a lot of extra energy sort of lying around i'll be playing uh one or two snipers just to kind of drain that energy supply a little bit and get a reasonable effect out of it but anyway uh that's about all i have to say for my uh, first impressions of star crusade now, there is, as I said, a referral link in the description, which, if you want to go download the game, go check that out. And there's also a code that gives you three packs and ten scrap, which is, I think, is that the equivalent of... I need to go check this before I uh, look like an idiot. Yeah, that's the equivalent of ten commons to actually go down, or you can just create a common for free there, which is nice. So that will let you uh, get something useful to begin with, like an extra silence effect or something like that. And it also gives you a quarter of a pack in the 25 credits, or you can put that towards your first raid. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. Or if you'd like to ask me any questions about the game, then by all means, go for it. Bows now, Spongiotto, signing off.